All right, so we'll come back. We left off last time. What do we want? We want to do a flow simulation. So let's load up this thing. It takes a fucking age. Now, a, you can do whatever, <clears throat> like you can, uh, the, the, the settings, you can choose whatever you want, but basically you go through the wizard. And I actually saw on the SolidWorks Reddit, there was a new, uh, a new tutorial by a guy who makes tutorials and he started doing flow simulation. So now I'm kind of like, oh, come on, you gotta do the shit. Anyway, uh, you choose your unit system, good. Uh, our flow is internal, we want gravity, we don't want rotation, it's not time dependent, it's steady state, no radiation, heat conduction is solids. Nope. Yeah, okay. Reference axis is the Z axis. Cool. Gases? No. Liquids? Yes. Water? We are doing water cooling for our CPU. Solids we have, we're gonna add it later, don't worry. <sighs> Polymers, let's take plexiglass. Okay, now we are going to do heat generation rate because our, our, oh, I need to check actually. I nine how many watts? How many watt? So yeah, let's say we go to this one and ninety-five. Not a lot. It's not a lot at all. Oh my god. Yeah, let's go with two fifty. And I checked the roughness for copper, and we're gonna put it at like 200 micrometers, meters. Uh, yeah, good, all right. Yes, great, great lids. Lids are very important. These are your inlets and outlets. And you need to choose a flat surface where you're gonna have an inlet and an outlet, so. Let's start with boundary conditions. It doesn't really matter where you start. Uh, let's take an average pump, a uh, water cooling pump. Uh, um, I want to show you how like I, I go through it, but I'm gonna find like, it's, pro it's usually in liters per hour from what I know. I hope you can hear the dog, I don't know. Uh, let's see, 1,000 liters per hour. This is a 70 euro pump, which is not bad. 110 euro, uh, pounds, actually. 1,000 liters. Okay, it seems like... It seems like it's normal to have 1,000 liters per hour. Uh, 1,500, Jesus. The one I bought, like, seven years ago was 750. <laughs> Mm, let's see. Also, 50. let's go with uh, 1000. So, inlet volume. So, we have uh, a 1000 liters per second, and then you need to change it so over a uh, 60. 16 liters per second. That's kind of crazy. Is it true though? Uh, 20 liters per hour, or 00056. Okay, cubic meter is a lot more. Okay, good. So that was completely wrong. 1000 liters, 2M3 per second. Good. So, we have here... Can I change the... God damn it. And I have 0 0.0002 sensors, sensors, and it's coming th in through here. And the reference axis is X on this coordinate system. Now you can choose fully developed uh, pressure. So you can, okay, from the top now, you choose where 
things are coming into, like your, your medium, you choose your axis, you choose how, like inlet, outlet, mass flow, volumetric flow, or velocity, depending on what you know. And you can choose if it's normal to face, if it's swirling, or a 3D vector, which you can define. A fully developed flow because the flow is already coming, it's coming from the pump. And the temperature is going to be 20, yeah, like room temperature. Do I need to choose the bottom? Yeah, okay, good, because it was out of the computational domain. Now, do we have more information on like the pressure? Pressure head, yeah, okay. We're gonna give this copper. We wanted it to be copper, it's not an alloy, it's just a metal. Copper, okay, good. Another one, insert solid. This guy is going to be a polymer, plexiglass, good. Now, fluid subdomain. You need to choose one part of the subdomain and it will mark it automatically. Like you see how, uh, what it looks like. Water will go like through the thingy and come out. Uh, we have water as a liquid. You can have gases, liquids. I wonder if we can do a liquid metal cooling that that could be very interesting flow parameters i'm not giving anything this is the pressure um turbulence parameter a epsilon um, i'm gonna leave it on the default and then we also need another boundary condition which is the outlet we want a pressure-based outlet that has environment pressure, like room temperature, no, standard conditions, normal, like just it's coming to the to the air. Like if you if you know how the system works, there's a pump that's like shooting, um, shooting air into the pipe, and then the outlet just comes into the reservoir back. So we leave it at that. A meshing is very important and sadly the measure here is horrible. I really like the ANSYS measure and I will try to do the same thing in ANSYS to show a bit of uh, what we have. But mesh is, the mesh in these simulations is as important as your boundary conditions and all, all the other stuff. A number of cells per uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what it gives on on nothing. Can I have? Can you mesh for me? Run mesh. Global mesh. Show mesh. Okay, it mesh. Um, use. Oh, yeah. Now for these things, you know, you need a lot of computational uh, power. Oh, it's already done. God damn. What do we have? Fluid cells. Yeah, that's not a lot. It's not enough. It's not enough. Let's edit the definition. Eh, eh, eh. Cells across. I want more. Eh, eh, eh. This. So oh, small solid feature refinement level. I have no idea what that means. Curvature level, yes. Curvature based is usually better. Tolerance level. Okay. Tolerance criterion. Eh, to the minus three. That's a bit. All right. Let's see what this gives us. Create mesh. Run. Actually surprised at how fast this is going. <laughs> Capturing mesh. Yeah, so when I want to do this in ANSYS, 
I basically need to model the subdomain, the fluid subdomain. Uh, this is something I will show later on how to do because there's a kind of a cool trick for this. All right, so we have a lot more cells. And now we can also, can you show me the mesh? No. All right, so before we run, we have a computational domain. We have a fluid subdomain that's defined. We have materials that are correct. Can we also see the properties of what they have? No, but okay, so you have to predefine it and like you have to know what material does what. We have boundary conditions, which is water coming in at a volume, like in a volume, and it's coming at a certain temperature. And of course, you know what we forgot? We forgot a very important thing. Cool. So what do we have? We have boundary conditions of flow and temperature, right? Right. We have this pressure, this inlet, materials. We don't have goals. You gotta have goals like in real life, man. So what interests us? Do we have gravity here? Do we have gravity? Whatever. So, uh, I want pressure. I want total pressure. I want temperature of the fluid. And I want mass flow rate. I want all the velocity, well, the resultant velocity. And turbulent. Turbulence intensity, energy also. If we can get this, that would be nice. Surface heat flux. Sure, why not? Wall temperature. Heat transfer rate. Forces don't really interest us. All the friction, torque, potato. A temperature in the solid interests us. Let's see. Eh, might be too much. Possibly. Wouldn't rule that out. Good. Now, let's see if we can run. New calculation. This computer. Use everything. And boom. I will see you in like five hours. Evaluati. Oh fuck, I've been talking to myself. All right, so let's, uh, let's do this again. So uh, the calculation is over and fair enough. Usually you wouldn't need all of this shit, but I just added it to, you know, the less you have, the more uh, like the easier the calculation is, the faster the calculation is. Also, my mesh is insanely dense and we will touch on that later. Right now I want to see pretty colors. So, and you can go here to flow trajectories and you can insert and I've inserted the first one. It is a, I want to change that to here. I put a thousand particles because my computer can take it and it's the temperature of the fluid and in arrows. Now I have to recalculate because I changed something. So I already have a bunch of, uh, let's call it, uh, improvements we can do for the next one. One of them is the cross section area here of the inlet should correlate to something similar uh, in the block itself. Because as you can see right now, we have sort of a pile up here, like, and uh, there's probably a higher pressure. We're going to look at pressure soon, but overall you have like pretty nice flow. You have a bit of turbulence that I was able to see earlier. And you have here like separation from the wall, which is not quite, not quite realistic, but uh, maybe there's a bit of turbulence there and here also. Like, can we look at it from this? Yeah. And you can see the temperature rising. Like the, the water is picking up some of the heat and 
taking it out, we start with 273 Kelvin, so 20 degrees Celsius. And we're living with a bit higher. What is it? Like a 320 minus. Let me get my calcul. 320 minus. 23, yeah, 50 degrees, which is not that crazy. Uh, another change I'm going to do in the next one is make this a lot longer because I think it's in, in interfering with something. We're going to check. What else? So uh, let's hide this. I may, I injected another one with velocity. And so we have, this is meters per second. I want the maximum here to be a bit lower. Let's say 50. Yeah, so I don't think this is very realistic. 50 meters per second is fast, but for a thousand liters per minute, hey, per, per hour, that's, that's quite hefty. Mm -mm -mm. This is the velocity res resultant. Uh, we can do X, Y, Z, but it doesn't really uh, interest me. Uh, let's look at pressure in another injection. Uh, uh, pressure, total pressure. Yeah, we want this one and we want 1500. And we calculate. So in the next iteration, I need more surface area. And I need a bigger cross section area for the inlet and the outlet. I'm quite sure. So, what do we have here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is it's coming in at what is this five atmospheres? Yeah, I don't think this can work. Um, I am very suspicious of this solution. And so should you. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, same thing. So we come in at high pressure, the pump is pushing the water and here the water has a lower pressure and a higher velocity. Higher velocity? I think so. Mm -mm -mm. What else can we do? Can we do the animation of this? And let's show the one with temperature and do the animation. And then now there's one thing here that I don't like this a vortex that I have no bueno no bueno at all so that's something I'm going to change for sure and but overall pretty basic there's a, a pile up here and let's change to velocity meters okay now a animation <clears throat> so it's like there's I call it a jam. I, my analogy for flow is always traffic because it's very, uh, very intuitive. So here you basically have a jam and after uh, the lanes, like after they manage the lanes, they flow pretty fast, like faster. And then on the outside, there's another pileup basically. Uh, yeah, I like this. I'm gonna save this for for the intro. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Now, for the next one, we are going to change the geometry of the block. And a bit here at the entrance, we're going to make this a lot longer. And the diameter stays because these are the normal fittings. So we can't really change that. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you enjoy it, comment below. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want to, to, to do. And, you know, eventually we will have a fuck ton of uh, tutorials. And, you know, everyone would be, will be able to learn and, and stuff. So, yeah, do that, please. Thank you.